Today I want to show you a different way to use proceduralism. It's going to involve creating a procedural pattern, rendering it out, and then using that pattern as a brush to sculpt your object. While it is possible to bake out procedural textures, the process is not that straightforward and the results are sometimes not quite what you want. So if you're looking to create a video game asset or display your model on a website like Sketchfab, then this method might be helpful for you. On my Patreon I've made several brushes available to supporters, but I'll show you the general idea of how to create one of these today. So here we are inside Blender and I'm just going to delete our cube and hit shift A and bring in a plane. I'm going to hit 7 on the number pad and then period slash delete key to zoom in and center on this object and then hit control alt and 0 to set the camera to my current view. On the right I'm going to click on output properties and scroll down to where it says color management and I'm going to click override and change it from filmic to standard. The reason why is because I want my whites to actually appear white, uh, otherwise they'll appear gray. Then I'm going to come up to the uh, render properties, I believe. Actually, no, this is still output properties. And we're going to change the resolution to 1080 by 1080, so it's a square instead. Then I'm going to click on my camera, hit G and then Z, and just move it to where it just is basically covering the, the plane there. Um, it doesn't have to be any more really, but you just don't want to be having any white space outside of this camera view. So now I'm going to split the screen here and I'm just going to open up the shader editor on the left side and while my plane is selected here why don't we get that same material that was on our cube. We'll just use it for our plane uh, it's already created might as well. The way I got rid of that shelf on the right by the way was just hitting N. So I'm going to bring in a noise texture just by hitting shift A going to search and then typing in noise and uh, let's hit control T while it's highlighted, which is a node wrangler shortcut. So if it's not working, just make sure you go to edit preferences and under add-ons, you know, you type in node wrangler here. Just make sure there's a check mark next to that box right there. I'm going to change the output from generated to object on that texture coordinate node. Then he'll hit uh, control shift and left click to get a preview going. If that's not showing up, you're not in rendered mode yet. So I'm going to hover over the 3D viewport, hold down Z, move my mouse up, and we'll be in rendered mode. So I'm going to make this noise texture a little larger by changing the scale to 1. And then I'm going to bring in a color ramp and place it right here. And I'm just going to put these values a little closer together. I'll bring the black up to 0.29 and the white I'm going to bring down to 0.6. I'm going to sh hit Shift A and bring in a Musgrave texture. Place it right here and I'll just connect this uh, mapping node to that Musgrave texture just like we did with the noise texture. And let's look at this one here. I'm going to change the scale to 8, the detail to 6, the dimension to 0.1, and I'll leave the lacunarity as is. I'm going to get rid of this principal BSDF because we're not actually going to use it. And I'm just going to bring in a mix RGB, place it right here, and this height from the Musgrave texture is going to go into color 1, and this color from the color ramp is going to go into the mix factor. Let's see what that looks like. And I'm also going to change color 2 to white just by uh, dragging it up with a mouse wheel. There are really so many things you could do with this texture here. Uh, you know, your only limitation is your creativity and ideas. But I'm happy with this here for a simple example. So I'm going to hit F12 and render this out. So I save that render. Uh, you can save it as a JPEG or a PNG, but PNG will be a bit better quality. But here I am in a new Blender file. And I'm going to go ahead and on this cube here, I'm going to put a multi-resolution modifier. And for my purposes, I'm just going to bump it up to 6. Uh, levels viewport sculpt and render but if you want you can keep it a little lower if your machine is rendering or uh, running a little bit slower. I'm going to change this to the sculpt mode workspace and now we've got all these brushes on the left the one we want to use is this top one and uh, if we go up to the active tool modifier workspace here you can scroll down to where it says texture and we can click new and then go to this uh, icon right here on the far right, show texture in texture tab, then we'll go to open and open up that texture that you created in the other blender file. If this loaded incorrectly it should appear right here, then we can click the, on this uh, tool up here, the active tool and workspace settings, and it should load in right here as well. For basic controls for your uh, sculpting, while you're hovering over this viewport you can hit F and uh, it'll basically allow you to size the brush differently. So if you hit left click there you can see the radius up here changes. And you can also hold down control to have it shift more gradually or you can just go up here and punch in 
uh, whatever value you want. 50 was uh, where it started off. To change the strength, you go Shift F. And that's going to allow you to change how much this is affecting your mesh. So if you want it to barely affect your mesh, just bring it down really low. If you want it to have the most effect, you bring it up to 1. So I'm going to hit F and size this up a little bit here. And uh, let's try just sculpting a couple times with this. So if we click on here, um, we can see it's always the same orientation. So I'm going to change a couple things. Uh, this mapping right here, you can do a number of different things here. Uh, this stencil actually allows you to kind of put it in the corner here. And then you can kind of draw on where you want. And it's always going to be kind of the stencil overlay there. You could change this angle right here. And that's going to change the orientation of the stencil. But we could also go like this here, change it from stencil to random. And then if we click this random button right here, then it's going to be a random orientation each time we click, which is pretty helpful. We could also use control plus click to go the opposite direction as well. I'm going to load in another brush here. So to do that, I'm just going to click on this icon on the right side of that little texture panel there. And then if we scroll, uh, I guess if we don't really have to scroll down. We just go to this uh, open image box right here. I'm going to choose another one that I rendered out, uh, this one right here. So it's just as easy as that. And then you can just start sculpting right away with that new one. If you want to smooth something out, this uh, smooth brush is quite helpful here. This isn't going to paint on your texture, so you don't have to worry about it. It's just going to smooth things out a little bit. And again, you know, you can change the strength and the radius the same way as before with F and Shift F. When you're happy with what you've got, you just go back into object mode and it should retain the sculpted properties there. You can even add a modifier on like a subdivision surface modifier. If you want, you can keep it on Catmull Clerk or go to simple. Uh, to retain those rough edges there. I'm going to go back into sculpt mode and just add a few more sculpting details here. Make sure you go from smooth back to the draw or else it won't work properly. And we can change the brush if we want or leave it on this one here. Maybe I'll just change it to another one I set up. Uh, we'll just use this one right here. So if I want, I can go ahead and add some details here. And actually, I want them to go in, so let's go ahead and change that. And I'm also going to change the strength as, as well, so um, we'll just add some random uh, indents here. Okay, so let's switch this back to object mode here. And I'm going to go to the Cycles Render Engine. And if you have GPU Compute, you can select that. For my system, it does go a little bit faster. Let's go into Rendered Mode here. And I'm going to add in an HDRI as well. So go ahead and go to World Properties. And next to it where it says Color, you can click on this yellow circle and go to Environment Texture. Then click Open and navigate to where you've got some HDRIs. I've got some free ones from HDRI Haven or uh, Poly Haven now, I guess. And let's go to just whatever. You know, I'll go to Cape Hill 1K. And I'm going to go down to Ray Visibility and unclick Camera so it continues to light my scene but is not visible in the background. I'll get rid of my light. I don't really need that. I'm going to click on the modifiers panel, and it's up to you how you want to set this up, whether it's uh, you know the Catmull Clark or simple subdivision surface modifier. If you go to simple, you're going to see you know a lot more sharpness, and you may want to bump this up as well. So let's just do some simple texturing here as well. It's going to open up the shader editor on the left here. Hit N to get rid of that shelf. We see this uh, default cube material there. Let's just bring in a noise texture, and I'll hit Control T. So we can connect the object output from the texture coordinate there. And why don't we bring in an ambient occlusion node as well? Because that's going to allow us to basically add in um, some darkness where we have those little grooves there. If I bring in a color ramp, you can place it here and kind of control those a little bit as well. You know, If I wanted to make it more exaggerated, I could drag that black up there. Let's go ahead and mix those together. And we could either do that or we could bring in you know, a math multiply node or whatever. There's uh, several different ways to do it, but this is just a simple way to do it. I'll bring in a color ramp, place it here, and let's feed this into the base color. And uh, let's bring this up a little bit here. We'll change this to darker blue there. And this one here is going to be a lighter blue. We could also feed this into the roughness. Maybe I'll just reset this and we'll just go like this here. 
and we'll drag this up a little bit here and drag this down. In fact, maybe we just switch these around like this. So basically what we've got is uh, these darker areas are going to be smoother and these lighter areas are going to be rougher. I'm going to set up the camera by hitting 3 on the number pad and then uh, period slash delete to kind of center it in here. Then we'll hit control alt and number pad 0 and something didn't quite work out there. I'll just hit N on the uh, the keyboard there and we'll just see what's going on here. I'm just going to center this here on the Y and then we'll go R X X and we can kind of rotate it there and I'll hit uh, G and Z and we'll just move it up a little bit there. I'm going to create a little background as well by bringing in another plane, moving it down a little bit and sizing it up and uh, I'm going to hit tab to go into edit mode and grab that back edge there by hitting 2 uh, to go into edge select and then selecting it there and then E and then Z is going to allow me to bring it straight up. Now something's not going on, something's not right here. There we go. So E and then Z is going to allow me to extrude it straight up there. Then I'm going to select this edge right here and hit control B to bevel it and we control the amount of bevels with the mouse wheel. I'm going to go something like this here tab back into object mode and hit W or right click to bring up this context menu. I'm just going to shade smooth that object back there. Maybe I'll change the black level right here just to make it a little bit less shiny on the uh, outside areas there. So let's change that black level to something like middle gray. It's still going to be shiny and smooth but not quite as much. Maybe we could also change the transmission to something like 0.8. Uh, looks pretty interesting. Also before you render this out I would suggest coming up to Render Properties and under Noise Threshold, just change it from 0 0.01 to 0 0.1 or lower this max samples way down. Uh, but apparently this works a bit better here. Uh, otherwise, if you don't do this, your render is going to take way longer than it needs to. I ended up adding one more color to my color ramp, just this reddish color right here. One last adjustment I did is I put in this color ramp here, I just set the white on the bottom and the black on the top there, and I plugged this into the alpha. This kind of gave it an interesting effect here, and it brought out these sculpting details a little bit better. So there we go. I hope that was helpful for you. New way to approach proceduralism inside Blender for me anyway, so maybe it is for you too. And coming up, I'd also like to focus on how to do the same thing with texture painting. So if you're interested in that, uh, stay tuned. Thanks for watching.